Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, TV, film, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Peter Meliotis, and on Twitter I go as PD Beats. Pretty excited because uh, my guest is the star and he's a winner of a Canadian Screen Award um, for Best Lead Actor in a Canadian Comedy. We're with Paul Sun Hyung Lee. From Kim's Convenience on CBC, Paul, welcome to Pop Turnative. Thanks for having me. No, it's uh, it's it's a pleasure. Let, I just wanted to kind of start as a little bit of an icebreaker. When did you kind of decide that you wanted to go get into you know storytelling, like acting and comedy? When did you kind of decide that's what you wanted to do? Well, you know what? Uh, growing up, I mean, I was raised uh, watching television uh, because back in the days when when my family immigrated here to Canada. Uh, they were both working jobs, and um, they didn't trust people to look after us. So back in those days, you could just leave your kids at home alone. Um, and so my sister and I were uh, uh, we were latchkey kids, and television was my babysitter. So I, I used to watch television voraciously. And um, you know, when when you grow up in another culture um, that isn't sort of your parents' culture, you, you know, you, you see. Um, well, basically, I saw a lot of white people on TV. And, um, you know, growing up and seeing, you know, these stories that weren't quite my family stories, that kind of became normal. And what happens is you start to think that, okay, well, you know, my own personal story or my family story isn't important. These are the important stories. And when you don't see yourself reflected on the screens, you don't think there's a future for you there. So growing up very, very sub- subconsciously, I kind of figured I didn't know that it was possible for me to do that, mm-hmm. to be an actor. And it wasn't until university I kind of I kind of fell into acting by accident. Um, it was uh, it sounded like a fun thing to do, uh, the drama program at the University College at U of T, and I applied for it. And um, my first year, I fell in love with the craft of acting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was just one of these things where a whole new world was opened up to me, and uh, I thought, hey, you know, this is something that I really, really would like to do. Um, I, I'd always enjoyed writing stories. And I had a big mouth and it was a big ham. So I, I like to talk a lot too when I was younger, but th- this this whole other medium of being able to perform uh, was was very, very enticing to me. So um, yeah, I, I'd have to say it, it was uh, first year university when I really, really discovered this is something I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, um, you a lot of people will know you as, you know, the lead on uh, Kim's Convenience on CBC. Uh, Talk a little bit about your, for people that haven't checked out the show, talk a little bit about your character, what Kim's Convenience is all about. Yeah, um, I play a Korean uh, Canadian immigrant by the name of uh, Mr. Kim. And uh, he is uh, the owner of the titular store in the title Kim's Convenience. Mm -hmm. Uh, He runs a store with his his wife and his daughter. And, uh, you know, the Kim family, they are uh, a regular Canadian family, you know, an immigrant family. Um, you know, they've been in Canada for a number of years now. They're just trying to struggle to make a living. Uh, the family is fractured, though. There's been a falling out between um, Mr. Kim, uh, my character, who goes by the name of Appa as well. Uh, Appa is the Korean term for dad, mm-hmm. basically. And, uh, his wife, Mrs. Kim, she goes by Omma. And that, that again, in Korean, that means mom. Um, so anyways, uh, the family is fractured because their their eldest and only son, Jung, has um, sort of uh, run off from the, he separated from the family. There was a huge fight between his character uh, and my character uh, many years ago. He ran off when he was 15 years old and has been estranged from the family. And there is a deep wound um, that is still, you know, it, it's the family's broken and they haven't quite gotten over that yet. And so the series, it's a comedy, it's a single camera comedy. Um, you know, uh, it's not up there with, you know, one of the things that we want to try to liken it to is like have the same tone as a, a like a modern family uh, style. You know, it's not like a sitcom like Three's Company. It's not zany or crazy. We try to root everything in reality, which is great. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so that's that's basically it. The, it. It really is about a convenience store in Region Park in Toronto uh, run by a Korean Canadian family. 
No, very cool. And I have to mention it because um, a little bit of a shameless plug. You're wearing a You're Killing Me small shirt. We actually just had... <laughs> We just had Victor Demadia, who played Timmy Timmons, really? on Saddle oh, right from the Saddle on the show. Absolutely. So, but it's similar <laughs> to a question I was going to ask. Um, yeah. What do you kind of think about? So, the social media, the digital media age, is is very powerful in terms of nostalgia always having a place because memes and gifs from all these TV shows and films that. Um, from you know over 25 years ago are still like bumping up and down because you're killing me smalls like that and there's there's sometimes you know some pop culture references you know on kim's convenience do you think that social media has kind of elevated um nostalgia at an all-time high or do you think it's all, the the reference to nostalgia has always been there no, you know, I, I think it's a little from column A and a little from column B. You know, social media, you can't deny the influence it has just because you can reach such a large group of people uh, almost instantaneously. And, you know, it, it's not about people who follow you or this or that. It could be about a hashtag that they're following, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's one of the, you know, the, the, the big powers uh, of hashtags. People don't realize if you hashtag like NHL playoffs, you know, anybody who's following that hashtag, whether they follow you or not, whether they know who you are or not, uh, it'll come up on their feed and they could see it and find you. And so people can discover really, really great things through hashtags. Um, the, the propagation of these memes, I think, is fantastic because I think as well it is, um, you know, if you're of a certain age and a certain generation, you will intrinsically understand the message behind all these things. And, uh, you know... Uh, it's really interesting because there are memes that I don't get because, you know, they're uh, for kids who grew up in the in the 90s. It's different for me that I grew up in the 80s. Right. And so the 90s, the, the type of shows that kids really, really sort of get uh, nostalgic over are, are far different from the shows that I get nostalgic over. But there is a common ground there, which is really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, I think. Um, what was the question? <laughs> well, no, but you, you, you answered it. It's just the, the, the idea that, you know, social media has become this vehicle of kind of allowing these things to kind yeah. of live on, basically. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's funny for us uh, as a show, like we, we try to keep presence with our fans. And so we'll be live tweeting in an episode and we try to interact with our fans who've uh, they're branded themselves as Kimbits, which is a brilliant name. <laughs> um, That's uh, awesome. You know, yeah, uh, it, it's, you know, and it, it is a fantastic group of fans who are very, very loyal, who are really, really uh, knowledgeable about what's going on with the inner workings and the outer workings of Kim's Convenience. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, very simple thing to just, you know, to, to press like or to retweet a, a fan's, um, you know, uh, missive about, you know, their opinion on a show, praise on, on a particular episode or performance or this or that. It's a very simple thing to do. Um, you know, as, as a performer and I, you know, I'm a fan too. So, you know, if I've tweeted uh, somebody whose work I really admire and they retweet it or they respond back to me, it, it makes me feel like a million bucks, right? Oh, it's 100%. A fantastic oh, 100%. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. like, it, it yeah. takes nothing. It takes nothing. So that sort of interaction is really, really wonderful. I think yeah. because it gives a fan to really sort of, um, you know, make a connection that they might not have had because when I was yeah. growing up, you either wrote a letter and you were lucky if you got any sort of response or you had to wait for the off chance that you might meet somebody who lives in another country whose work you admire. Here in the digital age, they, they could respond to a tweet and you can go, oh, my God, this you're over yeah. the moon. Yeah. You know? And um, that, that's how social media as well. No, absolutely. I think this is the first time in the history of the show someone has answered a question like, like in a fantastic manner and then asked what the question was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i don't know uh take that how you how you please but that that's a pop turn at first because <laughs> you nailed it that was spot on <laughs> I, I sometimes i get running i get running my mouth starts to go my head starts to go and then I, I kind of like you know in the back of my head I'm, I'm thinking you're going in circles like did you answer the question what was the question so i answered I, I'm, it perfectly I mean, I'm honest about it when I screw stuff, stuff up because uh, it really is. Uh, I think it's one of my best qualities yeah. is ad admission of, of um, mistakes and guilt. Uh, it served me well.
And what what what, what does Appa uh, say about social media? Hey Appa, what do you think about social media? I want I want to tweet something. What are you saying, Appa? Yeah, is a uh, social media is uh, you know sometimes very confused uh, because I have a cellular phone and uh, yeah, it's uh, supposed to be smart, but it's a very stupid phone. Huh? Yeah, I ask uh, all questions, never understand. You know, always uh, say repeat the wrong thing to me. So this uh, C person is uh, not uh, so smart. Hmm? And uh, always waste time. Uh, look at the picture. Take a picture of a food. I don't understand why people take so many pictures of uh, just the food. You know, you eat, not a look at. <laughs> Anyways, social media is, uh, yeah, is okay, but uh, I don't think it uh, has very long. Uh, you know, yeah. Put you on the spot there, but that was fantastic. I always love doing that. I, love, I always love having the opportunity of, uh, you know, because we have a lot of like voice actors that come on the show as well. We had Peter Kalavis, who did the voice of um, Ed, uh, Raw from Ed and Eddie on my show. And it's like one of my favorite cartoons. So, wow. and, and uh, he also did Goku from Dragon Ball Z, which is unbelievable. So to ask right. them that is really cool. The other thing I wanted to kind of end is I've had this opportunity. Um, I've been grateful to have, like yourself, interview, um, you know, um, characters, cast members from some fantastic Canadian TV shows. Um, you know, uh, Corner Gas, we just had Fred Awanek on. Um, you know, Abigail Winter from Merit Kills People. Um, you know, um, Olunike Adelaide, who is on Working Moms a little bit. It's just there's there's a lot of shows. Killjoys, Dark Matter. There's a lot of shows. I wanted you... Yeah, what do, what do you think of, of Canadian television right now? I think it's come a long way, and it's still in the development stages. I think of you know getting getting their name out there, but we're we're doing we're doing well. I think. Well, you know, I I think you, you absolutely. There's this weird thing about uh, you know I've been I've been working uh, in this industry now as an actor since 1995 ish. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know that's a good 20 years, and. You know, you're absolutely right. There, there's the one thing I have noticed is with anything Canadian, there was always, with Canadian audiences at least, there was always kind of a, a, a sort of self-loathing that sort of went hand in hand with anything that was produced in Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on a, a television series called Train 48, and it was my first sort of big break on TV as a regular character. Yep. And, you know, it was one of these things where right out, of the, right out from, the, from the get-go, people were 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 kind of crapping all over it because it was Canadian. And uh, back then it was a whole, oh, it's Canadian, it's going to be so cheap and it's going to look like, be written like garbage and there are garbage actors on it. Garbage. And it was this sort of default that if it came from Canada, it was going to be not very good. Um, and that sort of went hand in hand with um, us trying to emulate or, or, or trying to compete with the United States in terms of the styles of story, in terms of the writing, in terms of the budget. And it's no contest, really. It, it's sort of like, you know, um, the Blue Jays trying to go up against the New York Yankees with the same payroll. You know, the Yankees just have unlimited funds. They've got, you know, the history behind it. They've got, you know, all these resources that they can draw on. And the Blue Jays, you know, they don't. And that was a big problem with Canadian television, the fact that we, we tried to be American for too long and uh, we just couldn't compete. Um, Nowadays, I think the really, really heartening thing is we've stopped trying to do that. You know, we are branding ourselves as proudly Canadian and we are cultivating tremendous talents. Uh, and, you know, it, it's not all the United States is the be all and end all of, of, of all comparables now. We have we can watch wonderful dramas from Denmark, from Korea, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, from all over the world, uh, from the UK and you know, audiences are becoming smarter and they know now that, you know, the stuff in the States, it's still quality stuff, but there's such um, a plethora of other talent out there. And Canada's carving their way through it because we're just being proudly Canadian, mm-hmm. you know, and and it doesn't mean things like, you know, it, it, for the longest time, whenever anything was shot in Canada, uh, we tried to disguise that it was Canada. It, we, it was supposed to be this nameless, oh, it could be any American city, but, you know, like, it's it's Canada. And I think now we're starting to tell our own stories. And that's a big strength, because when, you, when you're telling your own story, uh, it's that much more authentic. Um, your voice is more true. And uh, it's, you know, it, it's, I mean, I hate to use the word patriotic, but it, it kind of is. And you're proud of it as well. And that's, you know, what about Kim's convenience? And we are up in the middle of Toronto. 
Um, we don't hide that fact. Toronto is, in fact, if you watch a show, uh, a great character of the series, the intercuts of the streetcars, the, the different neighborhoods, the people that live here, the events that go on in Toronto. And, uh, you know, that's something to celebrate. And I think that's what why there's, the, there's a swing in terms of what's uh, the quality of work that's being produced, because we're no longer trying to go beyond our means. We're playing well within, and you can do so much more with so much less now as well. And I no, think that's sure. been equalizers too. But yeah, I mean, you know, you, you've listed all these fantastic shows that are either shot or produced in Canada. And, you know, we have the infrastructure here as well. Yeah. You know, the crews are fantastic. The writers are great. The directors, you know, all, all the different the the production designers, costumers, everyone here is top notch, and uh, you know we can go toe to toe with anybody in the world. And I'm very very proud of that. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think we'll wrap up, Paul. Thank you so much. Now it's time to plug away. Where can people follow you on social media? Where could they uh, watch? Well, they can watch Kim's Convenience on CBC, but just plug away. Yeah, sure. You can catch CBC. CBC. Oh my God. <laughs> You can catch Convenience on uh, CBC. Um, you know, if you, you want to see the first uh, episode, uh, sorry, the first season, you can watch on Netflix Canada or the cbc.ca uh, uh, website or the app. Uh, on the CBC app, you can watch seasons one and two. Netflix, you can only watch season one so far. Um, you know, we're starting filming uh, at the beginning of May for season three. You can follow me. I am Bitter Asian Dude on Twitter. Again, that's Bitter Asian Dude on Twitter. Is that um, actually your handle? That is my handle. That is my handle. Bitter Asian Dude. And oh, wow. um, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's funny. Uh, you know, and that's that's uh, an old Twitter handle I've had for, oh, my God, since I joined uh, way back in the day. And I had, like, you know, maybe 10 followers. Um, but uh, And you can also follow me on Instagram uh, at Angry Appa. That's Perfect. Angry Appa on Instagram. And uh, like my Facebook page. <laughs> oh, well, well th thank you so much. And uh, I really enjoyed talking to you. And uh, hopefully we can do this again soon. Thank you so much. I had a great time. Oh, absolutely. Well, until next time, this has been Popternative. You can catch previous episodes of Popternative on YouTube.com for the video versions. If you don't want to see my face, you might want to see... You might want to see Paul's face, but you don't want to see my face. You can listen to the episode, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. We're there. And until next time, this is Paul and Peter Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. <laughs>